All right, first of all, ignore the haircut. I'm aware that it looks bad. So it's been a while since I have done a video on this channel, and I think that's probably for obvious reasons. But recently, I saw a movie trailer. This trailer was for a movie that I was pretty cautiously optimistic for. That being, of course, the live-action adaptation of DreamWorks' How to Train Your Dragon. And you might be thinking, Neil, how could you have been optimistic? I mean, live-action adaptations of cartoons are the enemy. And I do agree that the majority of live-action film adaptations are a plague upon the film industry and further rots people's brains. But even with that said, I still want them to be good. I am never rooting for these types of movies to be bad. Well, most of the time. But there's lots of reasons that I was actually looking forward to the live-action How to Train Your Dragon. First of all, it's something that makes a lot of sense to adapt into live-action, given the whole uh, Viking fantasy aesthetic, which is just a really dope aesthetic. Two, we have never seen a DreamWorks live-action adaptation of one of their cartoons. So based on that, I was very curious as to what it would look like. Also, Dean DeBlas, who was the director on all three of the original movies, was also directing this one. And that idea really fascinated me. I mean, it seemed like from stuff I've read and seen that he's very passionate about this project. And um, even as I'm making this video, I've still seen clips where he just seems like he's really excited about it. And I think that idea fascinated me because usually it's a creative tarnishing someone else's work. Granted, they are based on a book series that I didn't read. But he just seemed like really passionate about this in like interviews I've read and that passion was contagious. Plus, How to Train Your Dragon is probably my favorite DreamWorks franchise. I've never liked the word franchise, but I'm just going to use it because you know what I mean. So with all of that in mind, I thought that with this movie, we were going to get something truly unique. And then the trailer dropped. And my expectations went from up here all the way down here. That's that's below the screen. That's pretty low. Now, to be fair, this is just a teaser trailer for a movie, so it's really hard to have much of an opinion based on that alone. But most of the trailer was just a shot for shot recreation of a scene from the original movie which to me felt very cheap, lazy, and nostalgia baity. But I think my biggest problem with the trailer was actually the design of the dragons. So I was really curious to see how the dragons would look in this film. I mean, who wouldn't be curious about that? But looking at this, they appear to just be the cartoon dragons again with realistic textures thrown over them. Now, I can't say for sure that this is true. I mean, I don't have proof that that's exactly what they did. But look at this and tell me that it doesn't feel that way. But the trailer ended up giving me a really gross first impression. To add to this, not too long ago, Disney actually shared their first look at the live action Stitch from the live action Lilo and Stitch movie coming out in 2025, I think. There's probably gonna be like a full trailer out by the time I finish this thing, just wait. Coincidentally, Dean DeBlas was also a director on the original Lilo and Stitch. And Stitch and Toothless are often compared to one another. Uh, yeah, just a kind of weird series of coincidences. But the live action design for Stitch was revealed and it's essentially the same thing. They just threw some extra textures over a cartoon and called it a day. Granted, there are some minor differences. If you look closely, definitely the ears are smaller. And of course, it would have to be a completely new 3D model. They can't take the 2D cartoon and just add textures to that. But still, to me, it just felt lazy. And audiences, they just eat that shit up. Like, you take a cartoon character, throw them into the real world, and add some textures, and they're pleased with it. This trend, I think, started back in November of 2018 with the first trailer for Detective Pikachu. I remember us all wondering what the movie would look like. We all wanted to see live action Pokemon. We'd, we'd wondered that for like years. And turns out it was just the cartoon with some extra textures thrown on. Although nobody ever imagined Pikachu would be so fluffy. Like we all knew he had fur being like a mouse and all, but not that much. But even with that, we still had a few creepy designs that didn't translate so well to 3D. Um, I know Gengar was a good example of this, but those were the characters that were really 
never meant to be brought into live action. The designs of that film were largely thanks to the help of R.J. Palmer, who was someone who did a lot of somewhat unsettling, realistic takes on Pokemon back on the early days of the internet. And this used to be like a big trend on the internet where people would create these realistic depictions of cartoon or video game characters and they would just look absolutely grotesque. Up until the recent Stitch reveal, I was still seeing some of that for him on the internet. And there's a weird part of me that actually misses that era when it was really difficult to picture what these things would look like in real life. But now we have the answer and it's, yeah, it's what we're getting. I think the final nail in the coffin for the more horrific looking CG designs was probably with the Sonic trailer. And I'm definitely not complaining about the design they ended up going with, which is a lot cuter. But it doesn't really look real either. I mean, I do love the design, but it really does just look like a cartoon character interacting with real people. And I get why studios are doing this. It's because it's safe. It's the least likely thing to upset audience members, and it's the most likely to make them go, aww. But that kind of goes against the very idea of what a film should be. I think that films should be about taking risk, and showing us something we've seen before is definitely not that. And some of you are probably thinking that I am overreacting to this, that I should be grateful that Toothless looks cute and not like a hideous monster, but then I look at something like the How to Train Your Dragon Live Spectacular, a live stage play that showed between 2012 and 2013 and used these like absolutely beautiful dragon puppets that were this perfect combination of the animated characters and realistic dragons. I mean, look at this stuff. This stuff is just gorgeous. I really wish that's what we got, something like that. I mean, I look at that toothless design and I'm filled with a sense of awe and wonder. It's the way that a fantasy film should make me feel. Hell, I mean, seeing stuff like this makes me wish they used puppets and animatronics, but Sadly, that's a bygone era for Hollywood. Unless you're like Star Wars, I guess. Hey, at least then you could call it a live action movie and you wouldn't be lying. But yeah, CGI is not live action and it's so frustrating to see so many stupid people in this world convinced it is and just not questioning anything that Hollywood feeds them. These live action remakes have little to no reason to exist and they keep trying to enforce this idea that live action is superior while at the same time delivering the inferior product. And I'm still hoping for the best from this movie. There's little bits that have me somewhat excited. Um, I want it to be good. I just, I want it to be different from the source material. I don't want to just watch the same movie again. I have yet to see that and I am not a fan of that toothless design no matter how adorable he is. Anyway, that's all for now. I just wanted to go on a little rant about that. Thank you for watching and goodbye.